What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, I think I've found the perfect PC to put inside of your arcade build. Now what we have here is the Rec Room Masters Alphacade. This is a 3-4 size arcade machine. I recently purchased a full size cabinet from them and I'm waiting on it to get here. So in the meantime, I've been messing around with the Alphacade. Absolutely love this thing. As you can see, it's about the same size as the arcade one up, but it's higher quality, comes with real hat buttons and sticks, and all around, just a better unit. Of course, you could always go with the Raspberry Pi or an older used Dell Optiplex for something like this, but I wanted to use new parts in my build that's coming up. I'm going to test it in the Alphacade, and I'm about to show you exactly what I chose. I own a bunch of these pre-built Dell Optiplexes, and these are awesome for arcade machines, but they're loud, they pull a lot of power, and they get really hot. All three of these machines will work fine for an arcade build. On the very left hand side we have an Optiplex 310, it's an SFF style. In the middle we have a Core 2 Duo Optiplex 360, and then on the very end I have an i7 Mid Tower Optiplex. These machines work fine for big box and tons of different emulators if configured correctly, but I wanted something that was smaller, quieter, and pulled a lot less power. So I'm opting to use the new ASRock A300 Desk Mini. These are bare bones kits, but they do support the second generation Ryzen APUs. You'll have to add your own CPU, RAM, and storage. And in this model here, I've added a 200GE, which is a $55 CPU. I'm going to go over the specs of the unit I'm using for my arcade build. I'll show you how I have it installed in my cabinet, and we'll also go over some performance. So here it is, the ASRock Desk Mini A300. Now the kit I have here is actually the A300W. You can get them on Amazon and Newegg for $150, but you do have to add a CPU, RAM, and storage. I opted to use the Athlon 200GE. This is a $55 APU, dual core, four threads, 3.2 gigahertz with Vega 3 graphics. It's more than capable of doing MAME, GameCube, Dreamcast, Naomi, Atomus Wave, and tons of other different arcade emulators. I've already posted a full review on the A300, but I was using a 2400G and 16 gigs of RAM. That's going to bring the price way up. As you can see, this Desk Mini is super tiny, even with the power supply added to it. I mean, you can't get much smaller than this. It has a mini STX motherboard. Like I mentioned, I'm using the Athlon 200GE APU with the stock cooler. As for RAM, I have 8GB of ballistic 2400MHz RAM, but it is overclocked to 2666 in the BIOS. Two 4GB sticks is around $45 to $55 on Amazon and Newegg, depending on the manufacturer. And for storage, I'm using a 240GB SSD to hold the operating system. I'm going to be running Windows 10 and a 1TB 2.5 inch mechanical drive for my big box setup. All my emulators and ROMs are going to be running from that. This does support an M.2 Wi-Fi card or an M.2 SSD. It actually has two M.2 SSD slots, one on the bottom of the board. But this thing doesn't pull much power. It stays really cool with this 200GE and you can't even hear this unit when it's inside of your cabinet. And a cool little accessory that ASRock offers is a VESA mount. So you can mount this inside of the cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and throw this on the side here and then mount everything up. I just want to show you guys how it looks inside of this tiny cab. So here it is. I think it's really clean with this little mount. It's just mounted to the side of the cabinet. Got plenty of power for all of my emulators and big box. And if you really wanted to, this does support Linux. So you could run RetroPie on here. You could do Emulation Station. You could do Hyperspin in Windows. It's really up to you. But my front end of choice is Big Box. So that's what I'm going to be using for this build. So here it is in action. Big Box will always run on this. Uh, I actually have it set up so when I turn the computer on, it automatically starts up Big Box for me. This is actually an Insignia 19 inch LCD TV. So I have the remote to control the volume and anything else I need to on the TV. And these Rec Room Master Alphacades actually use the iPack 2 encoder board, so I did have to flash the firmware in order to get it to work correctly inside a big box. I just flashed their dual gamepad firmware to it and it works fine. I do have one of my full setups on this machine, but I'm not going to be playing a lot of these uh, console games. I will do some GameCube stuff every once in a while and Dreamcast, but I'm mainly focused on the arcade part of things. Yes, Killer Instinct 1 and 2 will run in MAME on this machine. Also, if you want to do any of the older 3D MAME games, they're going to work fine here. A Thomas Wave, Naomi, and even Nessica X Live will run on this machine. So this little setup pretty much has you covered for all arcade games. Now, something I like playing in my free time are shoot-em-ups. I do a lot of it, and some of my favorite are the cave games. 
the biggest issue with having an arcade fully loaded like this is choosing something to play. So usually I go back to the same stuff and I know I kind of need to branch out a little bit and find more because there are thousands of games on here that I've never even played. But I'm going to go ahead and start up one of my favorite cave games. This is Death Smiles. This is actually the remixed version. It does have to load the EEPROM, so I'm going to fast forward this. That's just how it is with MAME. So this does have a coin button and a start button, and you can also set up controller automation inside a big box. You're going to hold a button, whatever one you map, and then press another exit button to exit you back out of MAME, or whatever emulator is running at the time, back into the big box interface. I also have the second player controller panel map, so if you want to do two players, that's no problem here. So this machine isn't going to stay inside of the Alpha Cade. Like I mentioned, I do have a full-size 32-inch cabinet from Rec Room Masters on the way. Hopefully it'll be here next week. It's actually the 32-inch Pro Upright Extensions Arcade Machine, the Emulator Edition. I already have the control panel, and I'm going to be adding a real coin mechanism on this unit. And later on down the road, I will be adding full RGB buttons. Now, I'm not a big RGB fan when it comes to PC, but I recently did this mod for a friend, and it is absolutely amazing. Another thing I did for his arcade was actually add a full HDMI marquee up top. Now, these are screens that come out of buses from Japan. They display, like, the map on them, but they are HDMI. They run from 9 volts to 36 volts, and you can display images on them while you're playing your game. Big Box does support a marquee function, but I will have to modify a ton of these marquees to get them to fit that aspect ratio. So yeah, this works really well for an arcade machine. You can't hear it whatsoever. I mean, this unit is super quiet with the 200GE. Now, if you threw a 2200 or a 2400G, the fan's going to kick up a little more because that chip does get hotter. But with a 200GE inside of the cabinet, it's practically silent. And because I'm going to have people ask, even though I mentioned it, yes, Killer Instinct 2 for main does work, and the second player works. I just got to remember which coin button I set up. So I'll just show you this playing real quick. Now, there are a few main games that have a hard time on lower end systems, like the NFL Blitz. I think it really comes down to the optimization of the game itself. I mean, it is playable, but it's going to run at about 45 FPS. Personally, I'm not into sports games at all, so it's not a big deal to me. All the fighting games, shoot 'em up games, driving games, everything like that works fine on the 200GE on the Desk Mini. This is the GameCube version. I'm actually using the Dolphin emulator for this. And there are a few other Wii and GameCube fighting games that I'd love to install on here just to have them. And the 200GE APU will handle them fine. Only issue is I've been playing this game with a controller for so long, it's going to take me a little while to get used to a joystick. So what's it cost to build a PC like this? Well, most of the parts I received from Amazon because they were cheaper than the Newegg price, but the Desk Mini A300W kit is only available on Newegg as of making this video. I picked up a refurbished one terabyte drive from Amazon. That was $39. My boot drive was that 240 gigabyte Kingston SSD. You could go with 120 if you want to. If this is all you're going to run, go with 120. It'll save you 10 bucks. Two, four gigabyte, 2400 megahertz DDR4 SODIMM RAM was $50. $50, and the APU itself, the 200GE, was $59. Like I said, as of making this video, the Desk Mini is only available on Newegg, but there is free shipping. So the total cost on all of this was $328 US dollars. You can always find a used Optiplex like I showed at the beginning of the video on your local Craigslist or OfferUp for cheaper than this, but it's really up to you. It's going to pull more power, it's hotter, and there's a higher chance of failure. But in the end, I think this is a perfect build for an arcade machine. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Really appreciate you watching. I'm going to leave links to everything I mentioned in the description. Some are going to be from Newegg. Some are going to be from Amazon. But if you scour the internet, you might be able to come up a little cheaper. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I do have a full review of the full-size Rec Room Master arcade machine coming up very shortly. I cannot wait to get that in my possession. It'll be a 32-inch LCD TV, and I'm going to be using this A300 in that as well. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below and I'll try my hardest to get back to you. And like always, 
Thanks for watching.